Good evening everybody, Joe Pal Earlier Millet here. I've been writing a lot of stuff in my uh, book, which uh, if you remember at school, you used to do geometry on these type of sheets. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, uh, I, I like making long lists of things of life, like things I've done, things I want to see, things I want to do, countries I want to visit, graves I want to vlog. But then I thought, okay, how about you write a long list of like 10 bands or artists that you've waited a long time to see. Now in that particular order, I know I should be writing it from longest to shortest, but it basically just came to my mind about like how long I've, I had to wait to see all these bands. Now first on my list was U2. I first became a U2 fan when I was, hmm, yeah, it was like 1998 uh, when I first heard of U2. But then I didn't really get into their music until 2004. That's when my brother bought me How to Just Spend on Type Bomb. Two years later, I see them in concert. So it took me eight years of waiting to see U2. Now, I would not have been allowed to see U2 back in 1998 because my parents, well, they never bought tickets to see bands. They were never the type of parents who never went out and saw a musical artist of any time. And uh, so on my list, uh, love it or hate it, uh, Kylie. I waited some 13 years to see Kylie. Um, but I wouldn't really say that it was 13 years because there was a time when I was like, okay, when I was like, I was listening to Kylie when I was like 8 and 9, and I went and listened to her as I was 12, and then, and then there was a period where I wasn't listening to her, and then it came back. But um, the year I saw her in 2006, there was like 13 years since I first heard her music, so... Yeah, I could say up here, yeah, I waited like 13 years, but life itself changed for me because of that band my brother took me to see in January 2008, Dream Theater. And you know, I don't know what happened next. Then on my list, uh, Living Color. Now, Living Color came to my hometown of Parramatta in 2006, and they did not come back to Australia again until 2014. When they came to Sydney in 2014, I was not really ready to see them at Soundwave. I never saw Soundwave in my life, I didn't like the festival, and uh, it was too much money. So I thought, okay, I will see Living Color open for Alter Bridge at a side wave. So I rock up there early, I hang out with the guys, I told them that it's been eight long years, I've been waiting less time, I love your music, and, um, and I got a photograph of all four members, and they were really happy to see someone wearing a Living Color patch. And also, I do make jokes with Don Wimbish every now and then for his um, collaboration with Madonna on a bloody erotica album. And then, uh, Anvil. Like, uh, I first met Anvil in 2009 when I came to Sydney for the film premiere. But it took me until I saw them in London in 2018 to finally see them live. They're really good, and they're really worth your money. You'll get bang for your buck. And they deserve a lot of credit because... They have been making music for years and years and years and not selling millions and millions. But they're just not doing that because all the other glam bands did and they didn't. And also, uh, Anvil is very influential in thrash metal in Canada. And now, number five, uh, Anthrax. Uh, my brother gave me an Anthrax album on my 21st birthday. So, ten years later, I saw Anthrax in Birmingham. Um, Basically, I would only have seen Anthrax if Joey Benaladonna was in the lineup because one time they reformed, they came to Australia with John Bush uh, to play at Soundwave, and I didn't bother seeing them. Yeah. And next on my list, uh, Thin Lizzy, eight years. I first heard Thin Lizzy in 2003, thanks to hearing the boys in Back in Town and Jailbreak on the radio. A lot of people think that I've not really seen Thin Lizzy because of Phil Lynott is not in the band anymore because he's been gone for so long and that it's a Thin Lizzy tribute. But still, it was under the Thin Lizzy monk here. So, I like to say to people, I've seen Thin Lizzy. Now, number seven, King Diamond. Now, I first heard of King Diamond it would have to be in 2007. And he inspired me to look into the path of Satanism. Like, basically, there are Satanists out there who are like, oh, I hate Christianity. Hell, Satan. And King Diamond and Glenn Benson and that dude from Morbid Angel are really hardline Satanists. But um, seeing King Diamond was something I had to travel abroad because I knew he was never going to come to Australia. So, 
One time in 2016, I bought a ticket to see King Diamond when I was living in Sydney in February, and then I moved to the England in, uh, in April that year, and I had to wait two months to see King Diamond. It was, well, it was worth the wait, even though I had to live at my cousin's house for a week and a bit. And then number eight, Foreigner. I waited seven years to see Foreigner. Now, I was supposed to see Foreigner in Milan in 2011 after Hellfest, but when my mom told my bitch aunt Cecily that I was going to see Foreigner in Milan, she started criticizing me, saying, Oh, Milan, it's full of gypsies and all. Don't go there, you'll be rubbed. Three years later, my aunt Cecily died, and I didn't give a foreign fuck. Like, I just ate some chocolate, listened to the same virus, and said, Good rants, I don't give a shit. But then I got to see Foreigner live at the Royal Albert Hall. Some 17 months after I was lost at a uh, Heckle, Kylie, and uh, Yellow yeah, Dream Theater propaganda. So, anyway, Foreigner, great concert, love the band. Even though there's only like uh, Mick Jones in the lineup, it was still good, still the, the Foreigner name. Then, number nine, Metal Church, eight years. First set of Metal Church as young metalhead. My mate Dave Balfour was always into them. I gave him a listen every now and then, and I really preferred like the you know, Wayne David, like the Wayne era of Metal Church before Mike Howe. But then as soon as I saw Metal Church with Mike Howe, I thought, wow, I've been missing out on so much good music and all this time. And then last on my list, uh, Lee Aaron waited nine years to see her. First heard of her music 2008 when I bought a copy of Metal Queen. Uh, thanks to one of my friends, uh, James, who introduced me to this woman. And then I'm living in London eight years later. Well, sorry, nine years later, and then she's playing in London after I've moved there. And I had a good meeting with her after the show, telling her that, oh, I've moved from Australia to the UK to see you, and I'm so impressed with what you've done in your career, and then I hope my friends in Canada will see Lee Aaron one day. So anyway, that's well, one to ten. Bands I went a long time to see. I'm going to play Melon over and out.